The 2010s are coming to an end, so what better time to look back at a decade that's been full of amazing games and consoles. We started the decade with the PS3 and Xbox 360 and the Wii. And since then, we've had the huge flop of the Wii U, the amazing Switch, and of course, the introduction of the PS4 and Xbox One. But as good as these systems are, they would be nothing without their games. So what are the best that we've had the pleasure of playing? Now, of course, this is all my opinion, not just the list from Metacritic. So you won't see games like Breath of the Wild because it simply didn't click with me, even though I appreciate just how good it really is to a lot of people. So with all that being said, let's get into the Huntman Productions Game of the Decade. So I'm going to start with a game that's been released and just about everything in the last 10 years. Cemented a franchise as a true juggernaut, put a developer truly on the map and is still played an awful lot even to this day. I am of course talking about the legendary Elder Scrolls Skyrim. The game that Bethesda created came out as a little bit of a buggy mess, especially if like me, you had a PS3. But the potential was clearly there for this to be a truly epic title. From the now infamous title screen music to the memories of seeing this icy province of Tamriel for the first time, this game lives on as one of the best RPGs ever made and is even the title any fantasy game is still compared to even now. Throughout the hundreds of hours it takes to fully complete this behemoth, you'll fight dragons, become a werewolf, decide the outcome of a civil war and travel across one of the best maps in all of gaming. The fact that the bugs didn't detract from Skyrim is a testament to just how good it really is, and the remaster on the current gen consoles and PC makes this game look truly stunning. The big 3D Mario games have been a staple of Game of the Year discussions ever since Super Mario 64, and Odyssey was no different. The game was stunning, and every world that you travelled to was unique and fun. This time you were joined by Cappy, and he completely changed the game in such a good way. Using his abilities, Mario could take over any creature in the game, from Gumpers to a T-Rex, and it changed how a Mario game could be made. The worlds range from being covered in ice to a desert and even to a very built up human city, giving so much variety that this could easily have been three or four games. This was the exact game Nintendo needed to help sell the young Switch after the success of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it forced a two way fight for Game of the Year, which is still controversial to this day, as quite honestly, either game could have won. Have a conversation with any gamer about the best sci-fi games ever made and Mass Effect 2 will come up somewhere. Commander Shepard already had one grand adventure under his belt, but this second would make that look like child's play. Every character was fleshed out in a way that made them feel like real people with feelings and ambitions. And on top of this, Shepard's personality shone through brilliantly with almost endless dialogue options the game threw at you. To top it all off, the story was expanded exponentially from the first game and the combat was revamped to the point that it felt like a very competent shooter. Mass Effect 2 was both the best and worst thing to ever happen to Bioware because since then the studio has failed to capture what it had with this game and in many ways lives in the shadows of what is definitely the developer's best title ever. When the news came out that Obsidian were going to make a follow-up to Bethesda's Fallout 3, the gaming world was in perhaps a state of shock and excitement, as this was one of the kings of RPGs and storytelling taking on the now massive franchise. The development was rushed, probably about half of the planned game was cut, and it was full of bugs, but this quickly became not only one of the best Fallout games ever made, 
but also one of the best RPGs ever made. The story of the Lone Courier traveling across the wasteland to the lights of Vegas is still incredible to this day. Every faction seemed well thought out and had their good and evil parts to them, making every decision that you made incredibly difficult. On top of this, you have the incredible Yes Man, whose dialogue is both hilarious and smart, which helped propel this game to something it had no right to be. A masterclass in open-ended quests, decent combat and dialogue, New Vegas will forever go down in history as perhaps the most imperfect, perfect game ever made. So this was the first game I played and completed on this current gen of consoles as I bought it with my PS4 on launch day and I immediately fell in love with it. The thing with Black Flag is, it's a really complicated game to explain why it's so good. The Assassin's part of the game was for the most part really poor and yet it's the best pirate game ever made. Edward Conway was an outstanding captain to play as and every historical character you met was fascinating and well written but the stealth missions were for the most part boring and frustrating. The thing is though, when you get into your ship and set sail across the vast world Ubisoft created with your crew singing, nothing else mattered at all. It was during these moments that this game became just magical. Even to this day, people are still waiting for Ubisoft to release a full pirate game without the Assassin's Creed banner. In 2011, if you'd asked me what was my most anticipated game, then I would have said Uncharted 3 without even thinking. Naughty Dog's epic treasure hunting franchise grabbed me from the first game back in 2007, and yet it got better with every game that came out. The game had everything, Drake and Sully's relationship, Drake and Elena's love story, and of course the epic set pieces that the franchise is known for. From a madman shooting a glass ceiling off a capsized cruise ship, sinking it, to hopping out of a plane and holding onto cargo over the desert, the game was truly epic. Naughty Dog did what I thought was impossible. They matched the quality of the second game, and in many ways they even surpassed it. Many said it couldn't get any better than this, and yet it got better. Much, much better. So the second Assassin's Creed game on this list is completely different from the first. This was after the reboot that happened with Origins and it's a completely different game entirely. Set in ancient Greece, you control either Alexius or Cassandra during the Peloponnesian Wars and the game is just epic. The map is larger than Black Flags and it's stunning as well. The naval combat is back but this time it's done with spears and flaming arrows which makes it more tactical from before. Add this to the new combat and RPG systems that Origins added and you have a truly special game. Odyssey showed what Assassin's Creed could be and showed us that if the series keeps changing itself up then there's still a place for it. Let's put it this way, this is the first Assassin's Creed game I've ever put over 100 hours into since Black Flag and this holds a special place in my heart. Now we get to the game that I completed five times and enjoyed every single time just as much as the first. I am of course talking about Fallout 4 and of course this game was both controversial and brilliant. The game dropped a lot of the RPG elements that the series is known for but made the shooting much, much better. 
Add this to the base building and brilliant yet simplified dialogue and Bethesda was onto a winner. Over the years I've kept going back to Fallout 4 and kept finding new secrets hidden away in computer terminals and around the world which even to this day astounds me. Some of the most memorable companions I've ever travelled around with in games they're here too, from an old world detective to a news reporter to a ghoul that looks like a pirate, Fallout 4 is just a masterclass in open world RPGs. And a game I think deserves more love than it gets. Horizon Zero Dawn had everything. Amazing lead character in Aloy, big, beautiful open world, and of course, robot dinosaurs. The world was a mixture between a high-tech, futuristic civilization and a caveman-like society that both made you think and be in awe of its wonder. Perhaps the most memorable thing about this game is that it was made by Guerrilla Games, who were known for the Killzone franchise, making this a major departure from their comfort zone and it really paid off. Few moments in gaming are as satisfying as taking down a genuinely tough robot dinosaur with your bow and yet Horizon pulls this off constantly. A second game is clearly on the way, probably for the PS5, and it's something I simply can't wait for. And is also of course something that will surely help sell an awful lot of the new consoles. This one's a little bit different because it's a PC real-time strategy game which I usually like but not enough to include on a list like this. That goes to show how good Stellaris is though. I started playing back when 2.0 came out and instantly got hooked. Making your own species on a single planet to then go out and either conquer or just help the galaxy you're in is just so satisfying and fun. The beauty of this game is that every time I've played through is completely different. You can be doing well, conquering your neighbors and then feel untouchable, only for a great Khan to awaken or a fallen empire to wake up and suddenly you're weak and hanging on for survival. On top of all of this, managing your resources needs a lot of thought and when you get the chance to flex your military might, the space battles look just incredible and make you sit back with a smile on your face. It's moments like this that make Stellaris my most recommended game for anyone that owns a gaming PC. The fact that we haven't had anywhere near enough good Wild West games is a problem in my opinion, yet that changed in a really big way with Red Dead Redemption. The game followed outlaw John Marston on a journey to take down his old gang, but this became a small part of the game for a long, long time. The world became the main character, which is testament to Rockstar and their world building. This comes to light in the best way when you ride your horse to Mexico for the first time. Not only is this world beautiful, but Rockstar made this one of the best moments in gaming history with the music playing, making this 10 minute ride just art. By the end of the game, you'd pretty much played Grand Theft Auto Wild West and you killed and robbed just about every important person in the world before it all came crashing down in what is probably the best ending to a video game ever. It's been said many times that there's only one technically perfect game ever made and that's Portal. So when Valve made a sequel to it, it needed to meet a truly ridiculous expectations. The crazy thing is, it did. Portal 2 took the first game and expanded on everything. The humour was wittier, puzzles more fleshed out and the story was brilliant. 
Yet that doesn't even explain why this game is so good. Anyone can pick up Portal 2 and play it because it's so easy to learn, but mastering this game is a really hard thing to do. I think that's why it's so good though, because it's a game that you can put in front of someone who doesn't play games and watch as they get completely engrossed in what was another Valve masterclass. Naughty Dog announced Uncharted 4 saying it would be a farewell to Drake, Elena and Sully, so the expectation was set so high that they could never reach it. And yet they did. Seeing how these characters' relationships played out over the course of four games was incredible, and this was the perfect ending. This time we were introduced to Drake's long lost brother Sam as they went on one final adventure for that one big payout to set them up for the rest of their lives. This great addition meant that we were able to get conflict between Drake and Lena, which made you feel for what has become gaming's favorite couple. If I was to have any complaints, it would be that there wasn't enough of Sully, but the game still managed to be near perfect. The big set pieces were still present, yet they felt more grounded, showing that the studio was growing up with these characters and that by the end we had a chance to say goodbye to them in the perfect ending. This game was such a good final chapter to this franchise that I actually hope they never bring it back because you simply can't improve on the story that they've told. This generation's best game so far, and for many a leap in quality we haven't seen in years, God of War came out in 2018 and changed everything. From a single camera that's used even for cutscenes to the Leviathan Axe, that is the most satisfying weapon ever in games, this game is about as good as it gets. The fourth entry in the franchise, Sony Santa Monica rebooted God of War, setting it in Norse mythology and giving Kratos a child. This father-son dynamic gave the game a new outlook and made me actually like Kratos, which I didn't think was even possible. On top of all of this, the boss fights are the most epic I've seen since Shadow of Colossus, and seeing the World Serpent is one of those moments I will never forget. If you haven't played it yet, you should. Even if you don't own a PS4, you should find someone that does and find a way to play it, because there's every chance God of War be will become the best game that you've ever played. So let's get on to my game of the decade. Honestly, this wasn't actually that easy. I could very easily have given this to God of War, but having thought about it, I couldn't put this anywhere but The Last of Us. Naughty Dog made, in my opinion, the best game ever made. I've never cared about a set of characters this much, and the game also unleashed a brand new era in storytelling. Everything that happens through the 16 hour story is tragic, with very few happy moments, which makes everything good that happens to Joel and Ellie feel truly special until it's unapologetically ripped away. Even in the first 10 minutes, Naughty Dog set the tone of the game by killing off Joel's daughter, and by the end of the game, you realize that this isn't even the worst thing to happen. The whole game is terrifyingly grounded in reality and shows the brutal struggle for survival these characters need to go through just to see the next day. From clickers to a psychopathic cannibal, you never feel safe and are constantly on edge all the way until the incredible giraffe scene. I played this game for the first time in one sitting, so when this scene came, I was an emotional wreck, and that's something no other game or movie has ever done to me. With all of this, The Last of Us Part 2 is my most anticipated game next year, and if what I've seen so far is anything to go by, I might finally be getting a new favorite game, but only time will tell.
So that is for me the best games of the decade and what a 10 years it's been. So many great games and so many great memories. Going into the 2020s, we're walking into what could be one of the greatest games in gaming history and even a brand new console generation. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X look like a huge jump in console technology. And of course, we're heading towards a streaming future, so this industry is going in some very exciting directions. Here's to the next 10 years, and of course, the second year of Huntman Productions. Hit that subscribe button to be a part of that, and have a great new year. Thank you very much. See you in 2020.